Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand scaling. Let's start with a very basic definition of scaling. Scaling means reducing physical dimensions of the MOSFET, keeping geometrical ratios the same. We will reduce the physical dimensions, but we'll keep the geometrical ratios intact and we will see what's going to happen if we do such a thing. Any random thoughts? What is the first thing that will happen if we reduce the physical dimensions? Yeah. That's correct. Most of you would have guessed it that way. When we reduce the physical dimensions of the MOSFET, what we understand is we can have more number of transistors in the same chip area. In technical language, we can say that we can increase the packaging density. You understand what is packaging density? You can have more number of transistors in the same area which was there present earlier. The other thing what we understand very commonly is if we reduce the physical dimensions of the MOSFET, we can also lead up to reducing the overall size of my chip. So it reduces the size of the chip. Mark that these are just the general advantages. We are going to study a lot more advantages when we go and study different types of scaling in detail. Also one more thing which can occur in our mind is if we can reduce the physical dimensions and if we can have more transistors on a given wafer, we can have different type of circuits or different type of chips fabricated on the same wafer which leads to fabrication of multifunctional chips. So these are some of the general advantages of scaling. Now what we need to understand is the different types of scaling and a very important parameter term as the scaling factor. Now how many different types of scaling exists or how many different types of scaling are we going to study? We are basically going to study two different types of scaling. The first one being constant field scaling. This scaling is also called as full scaling and the other one which is going to be constant voltage scaling which is also termed as partial scaling. Now remember that with scaling we associate a scaling factor which is given by S. This factor is going to be greater than 1. All the horizontal and the vertical dimensions of the MOSFET are going to be divided by the scaling factor so we can obtain a scale device. If you are confused Let's understand this with a one simple example. Let's assume that in a MOSFET length of the channel is denoted by L. Now because of scaling, what's going to happen is the initial length was L before scaling. After scaling, what we will have is the length which is divided by the scaling factor which is greater than 1. So the length of the channel is now reduced. So that's what we meant, reducing the physical dimensions of the MOSFET. Now let's understand some of the basic terms involved with both the types of scaling. Let's first start with constant field scaling. As the name suggests, it's full scaling. It means that all the parameters are scaled in constant field scaling. For example, let's start the channel length which is given by L was initially L. After scaling is given by L by S and we know that S is greater than 1. So the length of the channel effectively has reduced. Similarly, we can see that for the channel width, the after scaling it's W by S, gate oxide thickness TOX, after scaling is TOX by S, junction depth given by XJ, again after scaling XJ by S. Now these two are very very critical. This is where the difference is between constant field scaling and constant voltage scaling. In constant field scaling, the power supply voltage and the threshold voltage and all other voltages associated would also be scaled down by a factor of S. We will see very shortly in partial scaling that does not happen and we'll see the advantages and disadvantages of doing the same. The doping density here is increased by a factor of S. This is to maintain the charge field relationship according to Poisson's equation that is beyond the scope of the syllabus currently. So currently for the timing you can just understand that to maintain the charge field relationship in constant field scaling for Poisson's equation satisfaction the doping densities of the transistors are increased by a factor of s. So this is some of the basic parameters involved or associated with constant field scaling. Let's go ahead let's see some of the parameters associated with constant voltage scaling as well. As the name suggests, this is partial scaling, so all the parameters are not going to scale down. As discussed before, the W, L, width, length of the channel, junction depth and gate oxide thickness, all this again is going to be reduced by a factor S. But the voltages, 
the supply voltage and the threshold voltage remains unchanged. This is the difference as we just discussed. And here there is another change as well. The doping density is going to be increased by S square unlike constant field scaling where it is increased only by a factor of S. Again, this is beyond the scope, but the thing to keep in mind is this is to ensure the charge field relationship according to Poisson's equation. In the further clips, we are going to study a lot of different parameters and the effect on all of them due to scaling, which is of paramount importance and will be able to predict the advantages and disadvantages of both types of scaling. Hope you have understood this. Stay tuned. Thank you.